when I'm freaked, I'm petrified. I said, drop me in the airport. I go to the airport, check in. I'm waiting now for the flight. Next minute I get a, a person at the counter say, could Mr McCormick please come to the counter? And I'm thinking, well, that's me. Okay, so I wander up to the counter. This man there with his suit and tie said, look, I'm sorry, Mr McCormick, but we've double booked out of Johannesburg. You're going to have to take another flight. I said, you what? They said, look, I'm sorry, you're going to have to get another flight out tomorrow or the next day. We've, we've double booked. I said, well, you've... No, I won't tell you what I said. <laughs> I said, then you mean you screwed up? And I said, yes. I said, well, I nearly grabbed his tie. This man must have seen a man very, very upset. Because I almost grabbed him and ripped him on the counter and said, I am going on that plane. This guy ran back to the wall and hid out the door. Because I was about to jump it. You understand a man who's been demonised for three days, has been tried to be killed on a couple of occasions, has now got some idiot telling me that they've double booked the plane and I'm not leaving the island? <laughs> you want to know about a hijacker? Man, I'd have lived and done somebody. I was ready. I was, I was right on the place. Man, I'd have done him. He freaked out and he ran back and he said, Sir, it's okay, it's okay. I said, it's not okay. I am leaving on that plane or I'm going to have your guts for garters, Jack. I'll slip you. I'll go for you. He, he knew. I, I was, you know, I was a, not very sanctified. I'm just going for it in the survival mode. As he backs off, he comes back ten minutes later and sticks his head out. He says, it's OK. I said, what's OK? I'm on the plane. He said, sir, you're on the plane. I said, you guarantee I'm on that plane? He said, you're on the plane. I said, well, thank you. What am I, you know, I said, I calm down a little bit. <laughs> I said, well, what, what, what's happening? He said, well, we put you in the gold class. We've, we've bumped you up. I said, what's that? I've never known what coal class. He said, it was business class. You're in a... So, right. Jumped on the plane. Boom, gone. I'm flying in the plane and I get the news over the, over the, over the um, plane saying, Britain's gone to war against the Falklands. It's don't cry for me, Argentina. You know what I mean? <laughs> I thought, great. England's gone to war with Argentina. I thought, I've just seen heaven. I've just seen hell. I've just seen God. I've just now come back to World War Three apocalypse now, thinking, here we all go. You know, I mean, they're gonna, I'm going to get back home. Somebody is going to give me an M16 and saying, welcome to World War Three. That's how I perceive it, you know what I mean? <laughs> so I'm flying to Perth. My brother picks me up from Perth. He said, oh, you realise we're at war? And I said, well, yeah, I kind of heard on the plane. He said to me, because he was ex-army, ex, ex-military, and um, he looked at me and he said, well, they won't take me because I'm an, I'll be an instructor. You know what I mean? I said, well, what about me? He said, well, you'd be going cannon fodder, mate. <laughs> he just laughed at my younger brother, real encouragement. You know what I mean? He said, we want to have a beer. I said, well, I might as well. You know what I mean? So I went down to Fremont and had a beer with him. As I'm sitting there, he's saying, well, look, you look a bit, you look a bit thin and look, look, you look like you've been on heroin. You've been on smack. I said, no, no, no. He said, you don't look very good. <laughs> What's happened to you? I said, well, I just died, saw heaven, have hell. I've got a bunch of, <laughs> of, bunch of demons trying to kill me. He looked at me, nearly swallowed his glass, his beer, the whole nine yards. He said, what? <laughs> he said, you're mad. I said, I'm not mad. He said, you put your head in a gas oven. Taking too many drugs, you're flipping blowing your brain. I said, no, I haven't. I've got a bunch of demons. I mean, then I realized I was blowing in the breeze, wasting my time telling my younger brother... What the heck's going on? So I went home, jumped in the jumped in the bed, went to sleep. He said, oh, I stay with my place is in Sri Lanka. Went to sleep, woke up in the middle of the night, and I've got a whole bunch of white-eyed demons floating around the air looking at me. <laughs> Ghost-like, white-eyed spirit demons. Oh, I'm looking at this and going, where did you mongrels come from? <laughs> Now, by this stage, you know my authority. You with me? Lord's Prayer, light, they're gone, mate. So I was furious. I thought, why did you follow me all the way from Mauritius? I didn't realise that each nation got its own pack. You know what I mean? You don't have to go anywhere to go. You don't have to go too far to find them. So I've got a whole bunch of demons trying to come at me. I'm now awake. I turn the light on. I walk around the room because I thought before I rebuke them and tell them to go in the name of Jesus, I thought I'd give them a piece of my mind. <laughs> well, they didn't know any better. I mean, I was ropeable. So I thought I'd let them have a flipping bit of a lip smack and then I'll tell them to rack off in Jesus' name. You know what I mean? That's a guts full of these things tormenting me. How many know one way to get a man to fight is hit him? I'm wandering around in my fairly unsanctified anger. 
And here at the fireplace, look at these tile fireplaces, built Victorian type stuff. Oh, I'm looking at this thing. As I look down, I see a little Buddha. Around it, I see rose petals. I then see joss sticks. And as I'm looking at that, I'm thinking, what? Next minute I hear the God speak to me, said, the white-eyed demons that are attacking you come straight out of that idol. I went, snap. Buddhism. The demons. Ganesh, Shiva, Vishnu. I mean, I got flash, 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 flash. I'd walked into temples. I'd walked and seen from Sahi Baba. You know what I mean? I'd seen the whole pack, pack of cards. I had no idea, of course, that the scriptures tell us exactly that the idols are actually full of demons. How many have read that in the Bible? Psalm 106. Verses 36 to 37. And they served their idols, which became a snare to them, even sacrificed their sons and daughters to the demons. So the idols they worship were actually demons. They actually sacrificed their children. My life was one of them. I am then, I am then, didn't know any of this stuff, but at, you know what I mean? Deuteronomy uh, 32, verses 16 and 17. Deuteronomy 32. 16 and 17, they made him jealous with tra- strange gods. They were abomination that provoked God to anger. They sacrificed to demons who were not God, to gods whom they had not known, new gods who had come lately, whom their fathers had, had not, uh, did not dread. And in verse 21, and he made them jealous with what were not God, and they provoked me to anger with their idols. So God's saying, yeah, there was, he was angry. He was, there was a jealousy, there was an anger because they were actually worshipping and, and bowing down to new gods. They were bowing to the Johnny come lately, gods who came lately. You ever read that? Man who came lately, demons who came lately. But they, actually weren't, they were actually demons that they were worshipping. I had found the presence of these spiritual beings in idols and temples and I never knew what they were. I'd been in the Katragama, I'd been in Borobudur, I'd been in Temple of the Tooth and Candy. I had seen idols and I'd seen them talk to me. I'd seen spiritual powers coming forth from them, but I didn't realise they were demons. you understand? So in a sense, you've got to respect them. You think, well, I don't want to say anything. I don't want to do anything against these because there's a supernatural presence that is obviously in these things that people worship. Thinking, well, I don't want to upset the locals by saying that what they're worshipping is evil, you know what I mean? And it's based in fear, but I knew in my spirit there was something in there that frightened me. I now suddenly saw what was actually in them, open-eyed, that they weren't just idols because they were actually demons. Do you understand any of that? I've got these demons coming out. See, angels were cast out of heaven. Revelations 12, a third of the angels were cast out of heaven. They were cast onto earth, Lucifer being one of them. The Bible says he's the dragon of old, the red dragon. How many know that a lot of people worship the dragon? We know we have dragon boat races. You know what I mean? They worship the dragon. It's Lucifer. There's no two ways about it. It's up front, no, no holds bar, Satan. But a third of the angels fell. They were cast out of their angelic bodies and became free-roaming spirits looking for a body. How many know they'd love to inhabit human beings? <laughs> Who are made in the image of God. How many know they'd love to trash that human being, absolutely destroy the inner core? When he sees mankind, he sees men and women walking around as potential sons and daughters of God who have the destiny and the call to be sons and daughters of light, glorified in the heavens and have total authority over every demon and crush them under our feet. And I am suddenly conscious that I have an authority through the power of prayer in the name of Jesus over the, these white-eyed demons who are in this idol. I suddenly have snap. Idolatry. How many know that if you wipe out Buddhism, you take out all of Hinduism too? All ancestral worship, you basically move through the whole pack of cards. That wipes out a huge chunk of the religions of the world. God says, you shall bow down to no graven image. You have the Lord thy God and him alone, Ten Commandments. So I'm suddenly getting a flood of revelation. I pray, the demons go, I go to sleep. I wake up the next morning, have breakfast with my brother. I said, mate, what's your mate doing in Sri Lanka? He said, oh, he's trained 